All right, we'll get started here. I know a couple people probably are still in the process of joining, but we will uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining the webinar today. This is Shelley Wilkinson. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at Tricom Funding. Tricom is pleased to introduce our Industry Insider webinar series. The purpose of the series is to share our expert knowledge and resources with our fellow staffing industry colleagues. Our presenter today is Steve Eisenberg. Steve is president and founder of ASJ Partners, the staffing industry's premier marketing agency. Mr. Eisenberg's technology background and extensive staffing industry experience provides him the expertise required to develop customized marketing plans designed for staffing and recruiting firms. Steve has an MBA in finance and marketing from St. Joseph's University and a BS in finance from Syracuse University. ASJ Partners are the experts at accelerating revenues for staffing companies through unique, customized, and highly targeted marketing programs. These industry-specific programs help you sell more, grow more, and be found more. Their expertise includes websites, social media, search engine optimization, blogging, branding, mobile apps, email marketing, and sales campaigns. In today's Industry Insider session, we'll discuss how inbound marketing can be an effective and affordable way to acquire new leads, Steve will demonstrate how to monetize social media through the use of five key attributes of inbound marketing, website, search engine optimization, social media, blogging, and mobile platforms. By the end of the session, you'll learn how inbound marketing works, how it can be profitable, and see just how easy it is for your staffing firm to be found. If you have questions during the presentation, please utilize the chat feature located on the right toolbar and submit questions to all panelists. After the presentation, there will be time for questions and an opportunity for you to give us uh, feedback on today's webinar by completing a short exit poll. So with all that said, I am going to turn the floor over to Steve, and Steve, you now have control of the presentation. Okay. Well, thank you, Shelley, for that nice <clears throat> introduction, and thank you, everyone, for taking the time to uh, come to this webinar. I want to take you through a presentation on inbound marketing. So the agenda today, um, trying to click, apologize, is we will talk about what is inbound marketing, what are some of the key components related to inbound marketing, more importantly, how do I make money with inbound marketing, what, what is content and why is content king, and how do I go viral, how do I get my information to go out and permeate through the website. So on this slide, uh, you can see that it really depicts that inbound marketing is really viewed as a hub, and there's a lot of information or spokes that go into inbound marketing. In this particular webinar, we're just going to pick a few of them, search engine optimization, email marketing, blogging, social media, your website, et cetera. But as you can see, there's lots of abilities to uh, increase your inbound marketing. So what is inbound marketing? Inbound marketing is really the new way that marketing is being done. And inbound marketing compares to what used to be called outbound marketing. So we all know outbound marketing, we would cold call clients, we would hope that they had interest in our service, and then we would try to convert them to a client. Inbound marketing is the art of using Google and having people find us. When people find us, we consider that a warm lead, and we all know we have a much better probability of converting that lead to a client when someone's looking for our service. So inbound marketing really involves with when people come to Google and do an organic Google search on specific keywords, how can I be found, and more importantly, how can I be found ahead of my competitors? The main components of inbound marketing that we're going to address today are blogging, mobile platforms, Google PPC or pay-per-click advertising, and Google remarketing, search engine optimization, social media, and websites. blogging. Google never really tells people 
how they rank websites in organic Google searches. But from our expertise for doing it for a long time, blogging right now is probably one of the most important things that you can do to help yourself be found in an organic Google search. The reason for that is each particular blog is really its own hyperlink or link that can be searchable when someone goes and does a Google search. So regardless of the content that each blog is about, for instance, you could write a blog about Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act, something that's obviously prevalent in the staffing industry. But regardless of that content, when you go to post the blog, you have the ability to put keywords. And let's say you are a clerical staffing firm based in the Philadelphia area. You can put the keywords on that particular blog as clerical staffing Philadelphia. So now what happens is when someone goes to Google in the markets that you're in and Google's clerical staffing firms in Philadelphia, if you had 10 blogs out there, that all had that clerical keyword, you now, besides having the ability of your web link being found, you now have 10 other blogs that can be found. So potentially, you could be every one of the top links that come up. Or more importantly, you've increased the probability that one of your links is going to be found. And it's all about being found. We don't really care if they find our blog or our website because they're both connected. We just want them to find us. We can't convert them to clients if they can't find us. Blogging is also highly measurable. When we blog for a company, we are able to send them metrics at the end of every month that shows them how many people came to their website from the blog, how many pages they viewed on their website, how long they sat on their website. So blogging is uh, very effective. And like any business owner, if we see that we're getting a return, we're willing to replicate that behavior to keep that pattern going. Email marketing. Probably most of you do some form of email marketing, but email marketing is a great way to stay top of mind with the people that are in your network. Unlike blogging, where we're trying to bring new people into our network, email marketing is a great way to reach people that are in your network. We can only call and visit our prospects and clients so often. So it's a great way to touch them on a frequent basis and deliver the value add that we're looking to deliver. So this next slide just shows you, it's an example of a particular email template we had made for a client, and this client wanted to give away an iPad. Uh, and the call to action was at the bottom by the penguin that they had to click and send some information. So the reason I'm showing this is the important thing for email marketing is not necessarily to deliver action, but we have to have a call to action. What does someone do when they see this email? And, you know, just as a point of reference, this individual client had about 3,500 people in their distribution list, and I believe they had about 380 people click and apply for the iPad. So they were very pleased. They basically kept their brand in front of all those people that hit the return. Mobile platforms. To me, one of the most important things as staffing owners and employees of staffing firms we can do is be in our candidates' phones. And mobile platforms are the way to do it. There really are two types of mobile platforms out there. There is converting your website to fit on a mobile platform. And there's really two distinctions. There's what we call mobile friendly, which is your website is shrunk down and it fits on a phone. And then there's what we call mobile compatible, where we determine really what pages you need on a mobile device. Mobile devices, as much as we all use them, is still rather difficult to, to look through the typical staffing firm's mobile site. So when we convert a website to mobile compatible, 
we really reduce the number of pages to the minimum that that staffing firm is really looking to achieve. And for the most part, it's your job board because you want to be able to have the candidates apply for your job or search your jobs, and maybe one or two pages that tells the client who you are, what your value proposition, and how you might be different. The other platform that's important is called a mobile app. This is where you have a branded app that candidates and clients download through the iTunes store, and it's branded to fit your company. So imagine a candidate downloading your app, filling out an application, and the number that appears in their app, similar to when we all get a number in our iTunes app, which means we have to upload or download the latest version of that app, the number means that you just recently posted that many jobs that fit the profile of what that candidate's looking for. So it's certainly a very powerful branding tool, and it's certainly the wave of the future. So I would certainly recommend that at some point you understand what your mobile strategy is going forward, not only from an inbound marketing perspective, but for your clients and your candidates' perspective. Google PPC, or pay-per-click, and Google remarketing are two pay services that Google offers. You have probably seen the Google PPC. That is when you type in specific keywords. These are the advertisements that show on the right-hand side or up in the top in a different color. And the next slide, I will show that to you. Um, obviously, this is very targeted because when we go in to do an organic Google search, well, the one thing that Google is very good about is only bringing up those types of services that specifically match the keywords in the Google search. So not only is it targeted, but you get to advertise on those words. And it's also very measurable because you get to see who clicked on you, and the reason it's called pay-per-click is you only pay when someone clicks on your link. And Google's very good about managing uh, that you can't have a competitor click on you 50 times and you blow through your budget. So it's not Google's first rodeo, so it's very well managed um, and, and it's an effective program. Google remarketing, you probably have had Google remarketing happen to you and you might not even have noticed it. What Google remarketing is, when you hit a website, Google captures your IP address. And then when you go visit other websites in your local market, that vendor or that services ad is following you around. For instance, say you went to Macy's.com, which is a department store. Now, in your local market, you went to other local websites. You probably have seen the Macy's ad pop up and follow you. And even more importantly, if you were looking for shoes, it's probably the link to the shoe page of that site. So that is Google remarketing. It's, they're both very effective ways to keep your brand out and capture the people that had shown interest in your service and keep your brand top of mind. So as I talked before in the previous slide, this is really where the Google PPC shows up. If you notice, the organic Google search is beginner yoga classes. And you see the advertisements, the ones in the red box, that show up, they are all related to beginner yoga classes. And the reason Google can keep making an infinite amount of money is they manage the budget that you tell them that you want to spend on keywords. So the more people that advertise, the more ads that show up. So it, so it is a very effective mechanism to stay top of mind and reach your candidates. Search engine optimization. We probably all have heard about this term. We probably all have an idea what it is but we find that most staffing websites have really not gone through an SEO exercise. 
And, and this is really imperative to being found on Google. The way Google works is when you type in an organic stream of words, let's use the clerical jobs or staffing firms in Philadelphia, Google's going to quickly go out and find every single website that has that stream or, or forms of that stream on them. They now pull them all back, and now they have to decide who they're going to rank at the top and who they're going to rank at the bottom. What SEO does is make sure, it's kind of like taking your car in for your 30,000-mile service. It makes sure that everything on your website from to your meta tags, to your page tags, that everything on your website is optimized for words that you want to be found on. Um, so that's really when someone talks about an SEO exercise, what's it involved? It also involves a competitive analysis. Where are your competitors showing up? What keywords are they showing up? We've worked with competitors where they give us a keyword that they want to be found on, and we do research, and we find out there's no traffic on that keyword. Now, maybe you might want to be prevalent on that keyword from a strategic point of view, but if there's no traffic on that word, you're probably optimizing your site for the wrong thing. So this is another thing that you should be thinking about from an inbound marketing is what can I do from my website perspective to enable Google to look at me favorably and rank me above other people in my market. And this is the type of report that we engage when we start with a particular client. So this particular client gave us a list of keywords, and as you can see, they weren't being found anywhere. Any of the words they gave us, they were not being ranked anywhere in the top 50. And that in itself is not bad, but the real issue is you need to determine where Google is ranking you and then what you need to do to improve your ranking. So don't worry that you might not be anywhere or you might not be where you want to be. It's understanding where you are and putting a roadmap together to say where you want to get to. Social media. Most of you probably uh, know about social media. You probably have company pages for most of the social media sites. What I want to take you through here is what content should be pushing through social media? How, how can I make some money on the social media platforms? This was an important an interesting uh, ad that I saw. And it says 90% of customers trust peer recommendations, 33% trust ads. So what that's telling you is getting a like from someone in your Facebook network carries a lot more weight than someone just seeing the advertisement for that particular study. So think about that. All the statistics show that people are checking you out, and more importantly, they're checking out your social media or lack of social media sites. And I equate this to in the mid-90s when websites were starting to become prevalent, we would immediately go Google and see if that particular firm had a website. And if they had a website, we were very impressed. Whether they had a good reputation or not, we were very impressed. This is happening with social media. The most important one is Facebook. Um, what I want to take you through is a company Facebook page that we made and show you the power of what Facebook can enable for a particular staffing owner. The first thing that Facebook does is more than any other social media platform, it allows you to create a very large branding statement. So if you look at All Star Staffing, in this conversion to timeline, which happened last year and you probably noticed your Facebook page changed, you get the ability to put a very large graphic 
about who you are and what you stand for and what your value proposition is there. So that's certainly number one. Number two, if you notice those red boxes, these are very important and a great opportunity you're missing if you don't have that. Facebook, by default, gave you a photos page, a map, and a likes. They really bring no value to you. What these red boxes do is if I'm a job seeker and I landed on your Facebook page, and I click that red search jobs page, that will open the search job page for all-star staffing. So I can be on your company Facebook page and search your jobs, apply for your jobs, submit your resume, whatever you allow them to do on your website, we can have them do from the Facebook page. What typically clients do is they have these boxes catered a few to candidates, apply or search. And on the client side, it's typically submit a job order or learn a little bit more about us. The next thing that's important is we want people to become fans of our Facebook page. If you haven't already, tell your candidates that you're going to be pushing your jobs out through your social media platforms and that they should become a fan of your social media platforms. This is another way to stay in their phones and stay top of mind. Every time a job gets posted to your social media platforms, your candidates are going to get an email. And this is how you're going to fill your jobs faster and stay in front of your candidates. So it's important that if you're not, to make some changes to your Facebook, allow visitors when they land on your Facebook page to do things and find out about you, and tell your candidates they need to become a fan of your social media pages. From a client perspective, when we were talking before about how people are checking you out, imagine when people find your Facebook page and you have turned it into a testimonial type of page. So run a contest. Tell your clients that we're going to have a contest every month, every quarter, just this month. We want you to tell us the best use of one of our candidates, and someone's going to win something. Whatever it is isn't necessarily important, but you want candidates to be, uh, excuse me, you want clients to be talking favorable about you on your social media platforms because chances are when a prospect lands on the page, they might know some of the other companies in your area, and it certainly carries a lot of weight that there are some nice testimonials about there. Another type of content you want to be running on Facebook is Facebook in today's world gives us the idea to peer inside a company. We want to do that. We want to know what your environment's like. Put a video up. If someone rings a bell still when they make a direct hire placement, put that video up and challenge your clients to put up what they do when their salesperson, excuse me, when their salesperson makes a big sale. Have a contest for that. There's a lot of things. If you give back socially, post a picture. Tell your clients, how do you give back socially? Let's see something that you're doing to give back to the community. This is really what the Facebook platform from a company perspective is. People don't care that you went shopping. You do not want to have recruiters talking to candidates. You want to manage it centrally and have it really become <clears throat> a value proposition that people get to know a little bit about you, feel comfortable with you, and see a lot of positive discussions about you. LinkedIn. Most of us probably of all the platforms have a LinkedIn either company or personal thing. The most important thing you can do is obviously fill out your profile. LinkedIn is very good about telling you whether you filled out your profile well or not. The next thing you want to do is LinkedIn allows you, regardless of whether it's pay or free, 
a minimum of 50 groups to join. Join them and join them now. And these groups you want to join where your clients and prospects and candidates are going to join as well. So look at your local chamber LinkedIn group or your local organizations of SHRM. Wherever the people are, you want to join it. It's also a great way to push content out. And what I mean by that is if you join 50 groups and you wrote a blog, it takes about 30 seconds to cut and paste the hyperlink from that blog and share it with the 50 groups that you have in LinkedIn. And if each group has a minimum of 100 people, you just shared it with 5,000 people very quickly. And I can tell you from my Google Analytics that LinkedIn is the number three driver of traffic to my website. And at every conference I go to, people come up to me and tell me they see the content that I push through LinkedIn. So I highly recommend that you start pushing content through LinkedIn. It's going to work. It's going to drive more people to your website. And if you're driving more people to your website, you're going to con be converting more of these people to clients. Twitter. Twitter is certainly one of the more interesting social media platforms. Some people get it. Some people don't. Uh, I think the important thing that we need to understand with social media is that we need to be in the platform's a few of them because we don't know where the people we're trying to reach are hanging out. So some of the things you can do with Twitter is, once again, push content. Twitter is similar to a blog in that after every piece of content or stream of information you put in, you can put in keywords. In Twitter, it's called hashtags. Hashtag clerical staffing, hashtag direct hire, whatever it is. There's getting close to 2 billion searches on Twitter a day. So you might not like Twitter, and I might not like Twitter, but a lot of other people like Twitter. So it's something that you need to consider. You can also push your jobs out there. Something that's starting to gain some momentum is called Twitter chats. Twitter chats is similar to this webinar. You schedule a particular time where you invite an expert to come and chat on Twitter with the people in your network. So you're almost having a webinar, but the platform is Twitter to deliver the content. Now, it might take you some time to grow the network, but it's certainly something to think about that you can provide value add for some of the people in your network. Finally, your website. Now that we're being found more on Google, and now that we're driving more people from Google to your website, can you convert these people? So one of the first things that you should contemplate, and many of you might have it, is taking a turn for the new technology, which is called content management, and the most po uh, popular version is WordPress. The beauty of WordPress that I explain to my clients is you really never have to come back to me to pay for anything once I deliver your website. You really have the keys to do everything. You can upload new pictures. You can upload video. You can change your content. You can add hyperlinks. You can add pages. Really, almost everything you do, you don't really have to come back to a company like me and pay for it. There might be some things that you might want to do because you might not have the expertise or you're a little scared, but for the most part, you're controlling your website. Another thing that a content management system is going to give you is the ability to change your content. One of the things that Google does when they're looking at ranking websites is how often or how fresh is the content. If these guys haven't done anything in a few years, we're not going to view them as relevant as we should someone that is updating. Now, I don't want you to get the impression that you need to hire someone full-time to change your content on a monthly basis, but 
once or twice a year, if you refresh your content, you're going to be viewed by Google as someone that's relevant and should be ranked higher than someone that doesn't. On the job board, there's some very interesting things you can do. If you have a job board, uh, most of the ATSs or the applicant tracking systems give you the feature. If not, it can be added fairly inexpensively to what I call the share functionality. And what that is, is a job seeker comes to your website, sees a job, he or she knows that he or she doesn't need that job, but a few of their friends are looking for the job. So it enables the job seeker to take your job and post it on their social media platforms. So now we're going viral. Now your Mr. or Mrs. Candidate took your job and put it on their Facebook page, and they have 3,000 friends, so your job is going viral. Because the one thing we can say about the staffing industry is people tend to know other people that do similar work. So you're going viral. You're getting your information out faster. Your recruiters are going to be filling your jobs faster. And everything is going to work smoother. Search engine we always talked about. And then uh, the mobile com compatibility. The one other thing I want to say about websites before we move on is if you don't have it, there's a free piece of software called Google Analytics. I recommend you download it and add it to your website. This is an invaluable piece of software that Google has. It will tell you every person that visits web your website, where they came from, how they found you, how long you, they stayed on your website. It's incredibly important. It's going to help you make decisions for future investments. So I recommend that you download Google Analytics. So in conclusion, I wanted to leave a, a fair amount of time for questions and answers. Um, inbound marketing is really the new way that marketing is being run. Um, it's being run by Google in organic searches, and it's about pushing content out, taking advantage of all the opportunities between blogging and email marketing and social media to get more content out there. The more content you have, the better your chance of being found and the more chances that you're going viral. So I thank you for your time. Um, please feel free to ask any questions that you have. I will be happy to answer as many questions as you have. Great. Thank you, Steve. So We're gonna, okay. Yeah, we'll give everybody a couple of minutes here so that they can um, put their questions into the chat feature on the right-hand side of the screen and then send it to all participants. I know we, we always like to give everybody a minute or two to get their thoughts together. So um, that was really good information. That's even a lot of stuff working uh, with that day in and day out. There's still some stuff that I don't know about. So that was very helpful. Well, thank and you. We did have, yeah, and hopefully did I didn't go too fast. Sure. No, that, it was perfect, perfectly paced. I, I thought it was great. So we did have a question come in. So. Um, the first one is, how do I increase my ranking in an organic Google search? Okay, so that, that's a great question. And the way you increase your ranking is understanding how Google's ranking you. So really from a pure, pure ranking of your website, it involves the search engine optimization process which involves making sure everything on your website is tuned as well as you can, that the meta tags in your code matches the content on your page, matches the page title tag. So there's a checklist from a search engine perspective that kind of Google goes through to see how well you're doing. Great. Okay, we've had a couple more questions come in here. So uh, next question is, how often should I be blogging? Blogging um, 
really, uh, blogging once a week is a great frequency, although statistics show that the more you blog, the uh, greater your chances of being found. But we also understand that we're doing other things in our lives, and we don't have time to be full-time bloggers. But just look at it this way, that if you did a blog once a week, and you did the same keyword on those blogs, at the end of the year, you have 52 links plus your website that could be found when someone goes to do an organic Google search on the keywords that you're wanting to be found for. So you've significantly increased the chance you're being found as opposed to if you didn't blog and only your website shows up. Steve, there's a couple more questions, but this is a question from me in reference to the okay. blogging. So is there any ideal length to a blog, or does it really matter more that you've got those keywords in there when you're doing your, your Well, content? you know, I mean, I think obviously you want to be pushing relevant content out. You want to develop a blog strategy that fits, you know, who you want people to recognize you at. You want to be viewed as an expert in your industry. You know, I would keep the blogs to a couple paragraphs. Uh, people don't really want to read a novel. But the beauty of a blog is you can write one or two paragraphs and then put the hyperlink, click here if you want to read more. That gives people the opportunity that if they're interested, they can go through it. But the person that might look at it and see a lot might think, well, I don't have time to read this particular blog. Got it. Okay, great. Okay, another question. How can I find out where my company is on a Google search? Okay, so what that involves, that's a search engine question as well. What happens is we can go in and we do the research uh, based on the keywords you give us, and we can tell you where you are currently on a ranking. And even more importantly, if you're able to be moved. If a client came to us and said they wanted to be number one on the word jobs, I would tell them that's never going to happen. First of all, that brings everyone in the world in, and that brings the monsters, the career builders of the world. That's not going to happen. Most clients, you want to be relevant in the markets you're competing in. So when you're thinking of these specific Google keywords or organic Google searches, narrow it down. Light industrial jobs in Chicago. That's where you want to be found if you're in Chicago, not light industrial jobs. Okay, we've got one more um, question here. Um, should I ensure my website is mobile compatible? Yes. I, I think that's really, as I said before, everything is about being in our candidate's phone. So understanding what's really happening with your website when it is formatted to mobile is very important. Remember earlier I talked about there's mobile friendly and there's mobile compatible. Mobile friendly just really shrinks your websites to fit the smaller screen size. Mobile compatible really is thinking, what do I want people to see when they go onto a mobile device? So the answer to the question is yes, it's very important. Got it. Okay, I think that is all of our questions. So um, unless you have anything else that you want to add, Steve, I think we can wrap up. No, uh, thank you very, very much for your time. Hopefully you learned a little. There's certainly a lot out there. You don't have to do it all, but you know I think it's nice to know that some of the things that are available to you that will help you grow your business by being found more on Google, because Google is driving our economy now. Right. Very good. All right. Well, I would like to thank our participants in today's webinar as well as Steve for sharing his knowledge about inbound marketing. The recording of the webinar will be available on our website, tricom.com backslash resources. If you have any questions or you'd like a copy of today's PowerPoint presentation or the webinar recording, feel free to contact either Steve or me. 
Thank you again for your participation. Watch for information on our next webinar session, March 28th, regarding workers' compensation. And there is a brief exit poll. We would uh, greatly appreciate you taking a few seconds to answer those questions and also open to suggestions for future webinar topics. So again, thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, Steve. Thank you.